been asked by the Royal Society to give a lecture here at Victoria and Albert Museum. Please join me in welcoming Professor Uta Frith. What is the Royal Society? The Royal Society is our National Academy of Science and it was founded 350 years ago. There were some very curious people in London who got together and wanted to know how the world really worked. They were tired of reading about that in books. They wanted to do their own experiments to find out. And then they published the experiments so that other people could do them too. Look at this. And have a look at this. What happens to my brain when I go into the museum? Your brain is curious. The museum feeds its curiosity. It makes a cycle out of stimulating your brain, then rewarding your brain. And if your curiosity is the brain's driving force, like hunger for your stomach, then it's like feeding your body with food and getting energy and feeling full as a reward. Now, here is one of the greatest treasures of this museum. It must be really special. Yes, it's behind glass and it's very dark so that the colours don't fade. It's like a giant pattern. Yes, like a garden. And for our brain, this is a really amazing thing, like being in Aladdin's cave. There's even an Aladdin's lamp there. These are repeating the same thing again, all different flowers, and the brain likes this repetition. We like this order. And here there are some patterns on tiles from Turkey. I see what you mean. It is the same pattern again and again. And yes, they do repeat. Why does the brain put things in order? Our brain puts things in order because it's part of our search for meaning. We love seeing the same put together in such a way that it looks like we are all in control. And these marvellous dishes, also from Turkey, have been put in this cabinet by the museum people. And again, in, a, in an order, because we love to see them like that. I like this bottle. Which one do you like? I love this dish with the tulips and carnations. Uta, look at this, it looks like a story. I think it does look like a story, like a story from Thousand and One Nights. It's from Persia and hundreds of years old. Do you think they're talking to each other? Yes, they're talking to each other with their eyes. And I think they're talking to us. See, that's what happens to the brain in the museum. We can talk to the people from the past and they can talk to us. Okay, now we shall come to the sculptures. Here's a really lovely one. You see this boy, how he's blowing the bagpipes? and the little dog listening. Now, I think when the brain sees this, it automatically wants to hold a pipe and play and blow up the cheeks. You feel that too? Almost makes you want to do the same thing. And that's how the brain is working. It's like a mirror. And when we see these lovely pieces, these sculptures, we try 
and be ready for the same kind of feelings that these people have. And you know, it was made a very long time ago. In fact, round about the time when the Royal Society was founded. Why do they have labels? These labels are written by experts. It's really important to us to find out why an object's been made and why it's valuable and why it should be here in the museum. So every object can tell us a story? Yes. We also want to find out what the creator of the object wanted to tell us, what was their intention. Remember, we're programmed to search for the meaning. So a museum is good for learning because you can go there and learn with your friends or with your class or on your own. And the objects you see in the museum, they communicate things to us. Things that people have done in the past. And some scientists say that communication is the most important part of what makes us humans. Museums help us build a picture of our society. And it's what we call culture. They help to create that. So when you look at all these beautiful objects, you wonder who's made them, why they were made, and they inspire you to make your own things and be creative yourself. Look at these patterns. All over the world, people love to create patterns. But the patterns tend to vary in different cultures. I think we should have a look at this beautiful garden and these marvellous buildings here. And actually, you know, this was the very first building of this museum. And I think we should go and have a look at the door. And see how beautiful this building is. And this really was the first entrance. And what's interesting here is that on one side, all the scientists and the other side, they're the great artists, and they're all working together. And the idea of this museum was really to have a place for art and science. I don't think that's the intention. He's just very, very peaceful. He's the Buddha meditating. So you can see from his hands and that he has his eyes closed. Now, some objects in the museum are made to show off wealth and power, and they're commissioned by very powerful people to show how rich they are to afford this. But other objects are made to show a different kind of power, a belief, something very strong. And here, you can really feel some other force. He's emptying his mind and he's so calm. You perhaps can just imagine what the museum is like and everybody has gone, but the lights are still on. I can see that you're very curious right now by looking into your eyes. Your pupils are very big when you're curious and they get even bigger when you get an interesting answer. Wow, it looks like it's all gold. A camera. Oh no, the brain is interpreting messages all the time, so it's not at all like a camera. We receive things through our eyes and other senses, but what matters is what we think a thing really is, and this is perception. Okay, let's go and have a look at something else. Look here, that's Oliver Cromwell. Do we learn things by copying? 
yes. We learn most from those people or things that we trust. Because these objects are in the museum, we look up to them. We've learned to trust them. They can ignite our interest. Our brain runs a cycle between exploring new things and using what it already knows. This is good for your brain, this kind of exploration and learning. It's like exercise. Whoa, look at all those books. Yes, in this museum, there are not only these wonderful objects, there are also books about the objects. And it's a little bit like the brain, where we have lots of memories stored, but also memories about memories. So is the brain a bit like a museum? Or the museum is a bit like a brain. The museum puts things in order and creates meaning and it stores things for us to remember. And there are all these galleries which communicate with us, just like the conscious part of the brain communicates with other people. And lots of people at work behind the scenes process all these beautiful objects that we can then see. So there's lots of stuff going on in our unconscious mind so that we can then enjoy all the conscious things. What happens when we are learning is our brain makes guesses and then it sends out tests to check if its predictions are right. And all this happens without our knowing. Painting. It looks like he's getting a piggyback. What is it telling you? This man is giving his little boy a piggyback and it looks really fun. That's interesting. Do you know what's happening? Your brain is interpreting the picture. Your brain is asking itself, what is the intention of the artist? It's called Henry IV, the Dauphin, his son, and the Spanish ambassador. And what the painter wanted to do was to show what a fun dad this King Henry was. How do we understand what pictures and objects mean? Does our brain ask itself questions? Yes, exactly. Our brain has this constant conversation going on. It asks questions and that's how we get answers. That's how the brain learns. It's just like you and me having this conversation now, and we are learning from each other. Don't look. OK, what are you doing? I'm going to show you about expectation. So let's do a little experiment. What do you think this is? I can see a little curly tail. I think it's a pig. Ah, good guess. Now take your hand away. <laughs> And it's not a pig, no. but your brain did right. Your brain interpreted this. It's what we expect to see. But in fact, now you know it's a bull. Mistakes are important. They tell us things too. When you do an experiment, your expectations do not work out. You can learn a lot. These must have been for really important people, like the king or the queen. How right. These are really symbols of power. Of course, they're very precious objects too, because they're made of silver, and they're very ornate, and very difficult to make. But the reason why we like them and why we treasure them in the museum is, of course, because they mean such powerful things. They belong to the very powerful people. In the museum, you can explore and discover for yourself. You can open doors for yourself. 
you learn in different ways. You learn from other people, from the labels, and by just asking yourself questions. Value is partly to do with how society sees itself and how we see ourselves, but it's important to our brain for something that is valued to be the real thing, to be genuine. Wow, that looks scary. It looks a bit scary, but you know what? I read just there, that leopard is actually not an original, it's a copy. And the real leopard is actually in Moscow. But it's funny, our brain thinks that a copy is not quite as valuable, it's not quite the same as the real thing. It's very important for us to know and to trust that all the objects in the museum are really originals. Hey, look, it's dark outside. It must be time for your lecture now. Are you coming? Are you curious? <laughs> 